Hi, eighth grade. So this week I am going to tell you to start with the Ed puzzle. So you're going to watch the video. You're going to answer the questions. Don't forget forget that you can always go back and rewatch that section to find the answer that you need. Um, also, these questions are very Googleable. So if you want to use Google to find the answer or to help you determine the answer, you can do that too. Um, so I would say start with the Ed puzzle because it gives you some background that you kind of need that I skipped in the last part last week because I was like, okay, this is too much. Let's like streamline it. So now I need to catch up and give you some information that you didn't get. Okay. Um, so this is the classwork grade. This will be that major assessment grade for this week. And I did give you a virtual tour of the space launch and that is your homework grade. Right. And some things I want to give you and some things I'm kind of forced to give you. So there you go. All right. Most people have been doing well on the virtual tours. All right. Uh, field trips. So phenomenon. We're always talking about natural phenomenon, things that happen and why they happen. Um, that's kind of the point of science. So we're learning that the movement of tectonic plates causes seismic waves. Those are our earthquake waves that can travel through the Earth's materials. So that's actually how a scientist found out about the mantle and the core because they're different densities and these seismic waves travel at different speeds and can travel through different materials in different ways. And some of them don't travel through certain materials. All right. So especially liquids. All right. So we can use data to predict locations of earthquakes and volcanoes. And we know and understand um, when we can explain the effect of a process in the Earth's surface, given the change in tectonic um, condition. So if the plates move, if the plates bang into each other, if one goes under another, something's going to change uh, on the surface, okay, or underground. Okay, so this first one is a really neat video. All right, you're going to start it at 50 seconds. I didn't know that I could start it at 50 seconds for you. I just learned that, but it was after I had already posted. So you're going to watch the video. I even put the time that this clock should be at. Um, when the earthquake occurs. And let me tell you, something major happens. It's crazy. All right, so you're gonna write down what you saw. All right, what do you notice? Okay, this is a pretty neat um, little GIF um, explaining two different types of waves. All right, so this is called the primary wave. This one is called a surface wave, all right, or a P wave and an S wave. All right, those are common terms. All right, and you, I gave you some links so this explains the different types of se seismic waves or the waves released during an earthquake. Seismic seismology is the study of earthquakes and a seismograph is the instrument that measures how strong the earthquake is, which I didn't really get to in this project, but it might be something you're interested in. All right, and then this is an activity I always do. This is so classic with the slinky. Um, so when you, um, move it back and forth all right it's one type of wave and then when you push it it makes a different type of wave and so they go through that explanation it's very quick i think this is like a 20 second video all right so those are two links i added to help you to explain that what is going on here what do these things have in common and what is different all right and you want to be watching these bars or lines and how they change all right Okay, I think I gave you enough of the answer. Okay, so also very Googleable, or we gave you a website for help, or you can just use the picture. What's the difference between an epicenter and the focus of where an earthquake comes? All right, and you might be able to tell that just from the picture. And then we want you to find out how do scientists find the epicenter to an earthquake? How do we know where it is? And then you're going to research those P and S waves that I was showing you in that other slide, this one. So one is a P, one is an S. What's the difference? All right. And I already mentioned that there's a difference of the matter that they can travel through that are here on Earth and common All right, in the surface. All right. And then you have this neat, another GIF showing the change through different rock layers through an earthquake. So you're going to tell us what happened in part one or in part two or in part three. Okay. So it's an animation. All right. So 
This is my reminder, make sure you check out the Ed Puzzle for plate boundaries and plate tectonics. It will help you. It will help you to better explain how earthquakes and volcanoes are related. So that you can get that picture in your head of the Earth's surface and why things are happening in different places. Okay, so now it's gizmo time. So the gizmo is called plate tectonics, plate boundaries. Um, and you are going to play around with it to show me how volcanoes um, occur. There's different boundaries up here that you can choose. I did turn on all the labels for myself. Um, so if you start with boundary A, so these arrows are showing you that this tectonic plate is going in that direction and this plate is going this way, all right? And this is an ocean plate and this is a continental plate. All right. And so if you press on whatever arrow up here gets highlighted, it will move that plate in that direction. So if I press this, right, so this bit of land is now further away. It's pushed and we call this a fault line. Okay. So where the rocks right here. So this is from above what it would look like. So this is a fault line now where that change occurred. All right. Um, so then boundary B moves over to this boundary. And so if we move the volcano and the oceanic plate in that direction, you'll make high mountains, right? And then you can undo. So you're going to try boundary C and boundary D. And then you're going to take a screenshot, because I believe I ask you, to show us how volcanoes are created. So I did not give you the answer yet. So you need to form some volcanoes, take a screenshot and put it here. You can use the screenshot. Oh, they don't have it here. Okay, well, you'll just make your own screenshot and that's fine. So sometimes they have it as a little tool on the bottom, but they don't right now. So we're getting towards the end where I ask you some questions. So what had to happen in order for a volcano to be formed? The next follow-up question I ask you is because in the gizmo, it doesn't show you how these are formed. So I want you to look up how were the Hawaiian islands formed. All right. And then have you ever been in an earthquake or a volcano? Some people might have. I'd like to know that. I've been in, in an earthquake here in New Jersey. I also slept through three as a kid. But we had a major one, I'd say about 10 years ago. I should probably Google that. Um, that one was pretty major. And, and I definitely got woken up by it. I was napping at the time. I'm a big napper. All right. And then find a volcano that you would like to visit. Um, it can be dormant. It does not need to be active. It does ne not need to be spewing lava if you're scared of lava. I'm scared of lava. I will say that. Um, and there's many, and there's many types of volcanoes out there. So I could actually ask you to find three volcanoes, one of each type of volcano, a shield, a composite, a cone, but I'm not going to do that. But if you're interested, there you go. All right. And we are family. Ohana means family. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions, email me, come to Google Meets. I don't know how else you get in touch with me, but those are good, good ways. All right. Um, just going to mention, I'm not available on Friday and Monday, both for very different reasons. Um, so if you could work on this ahead of time, that would be fabulous. All right. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Oh, I need to press the little doodad. Come on. Nope. Okay. Down here.